All right, we're continuing on with rational expressions here in section 11.4. So vocab is not really actual vocabulary word, just a reminder that when you multiply or divide rational expressions, you do it just like normal fractions with numbers. So any of the rules that apply to multiplying and dividing fractions of numbers also apply to rational expressions. Now, the only difference is a rational expression could have some variables mixed in, but if you multiply two rational expressions by each other, you multiply across the top, first one in the top multiplied by second one in the top gives you the new top and straight across the bottom. So multiplication, straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Now when you're dividing, uh, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So you just take this second fraction and you flip it upside down. So the C and the D switch places and then you multiply straight across the top. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it except the examples will help illustrate uh, what it's going to look like because instead of numbers here they're going to be whole expressions but still thinking back to section 11.3 the objective after you finish doing all this is to factor and cancel so if you think about it when it's separated like this it's kind of like it's already factored for you so if there are things that you can cancel before you multiply together you really should do that uh, for example with numbers if you had three-fourths times two-eighths for example right you really should reduce this two eighths by canceling out a factor of four before you go ahead and do the multiplication. And you can also diagonally reduce, because this is in the numerator, this is in the denominator, you can diagonally reduce as well. So you want to reduce before you uh, multiply, if at all possible. A couple problem solving tips. Show your work clearly. You're going to be tempted in a lot of these problems to just try to jump straight to the answer and cancel a bunch of stuff out all in your head. Uh, but I encourage you to show your work very clearly, especially when you're multiplying by the reciprocal. You want to actually write that down, show that step in, in writing, and it will help you make sure you don't get mixed up in what's in the top of the fraction and what's in the bottom of the fraction. And I know it seems tedious, but I promise in the long run it will help you prevent making mistakes. Second thing, anything that is factorable should be factored first. So before you start combining things and multiplying them together, always factor out, always check for common factors and quadratic factors. Quadratic factors are going to be pretty common. Remember, they always start with something squared. So if you see something squared in a trinomial, it's almost always going to be a quadratic factor. And then the last thing is, uh, it's not going to start asking for as much as it has in the past in the textbook. Uh, but remember, you want to exclude values that make the denominator 0, because those are uh, you can't divide by 0, at least not until you get to higher math. So for now, anything that makes the denominator 0, you're going to just write down as an excluded value. Alrighty, let's jump into some examples. So here we go, find each product. Now the first thing you could do is multiply across 14c to the fifth in the numerator, and then 2 times c squared times c would be 2c cubed in the bottom. But as I just said, it's better to reduce first. So this c squared, um, well, I don't know actually, let's say 14 over 2 reduces to 7. And let's see if we can combine the c's together. We got 5 in the top, and we have 1, 2, 3 in the bottom. So that means the top is going to win by 2. I don't know, maybe this is, I don't even know if I'm following, I'm following the rules, but it's kind of like just common sense at this point. Uh, how about when you multiply, divide by a fraction, multiply by a reciprocal. So here's where I'm actually going to show my work, right? So I write c cubed over d cubed, and then I write multiply by, then I do the reciprocal here. So I put this c cubed in the top, and I put the d cubed in the bottom. And for easy ones like this, you're very tempted to do it in your head, but just uh, for, for my sake, humor me and, and actually show your work. So we get a total answer of uh, c to the 6th over d to the 6th. When you multiply two things together, you add the exponent if they have the same base. Uh, let's skip down to something a little more challenging. Let's try number 7. Okay, So this is multiplication. So the first thing you want to notice is that you've got this y plus 3 here in parentheses, and you've got this y plus 3 here as all one piece. There's not parentheses shown, but because it's the denominator of a fraction, it's all one piece. So this can cancel out with this before you even get going. Then we've got the 8 and the 4. That can reduce to just a 2 and a 1. So our final answer is super easy. Basically everything is gone except the 2 and the y minus 3. Okay. So that will be your final answer. You could distribute this in and you could get 2y minus 6. I'm not sure how the answers in the back of the book will be, so be aware that you might need to check both. And let's put some excluded value here. y should not equal what? Uh, we divided by y plus 3, so y should not equal the opposite of that, which is negative 3. Uh, I missed some excluded values up here. c cannot equal 0 in this one because it's in the denominator. And over here, both c and d cannot equal 0 because they are both in the denominators. Uh, let me check ahead one. Yeah, we're going to get some trickier ones. 
So let's try number 17 just for the sake of it. So instead of dividing by a fraction, we're going to multiply by, let me write in the reciprocal here, x plus 3. This is a short way to do it, is I'm just going to cross this out and rewrite it. Now on your homework, I, sh I should say you should never cross this out. You should always rewrite it uh, because you want to make sure you can see what the original problem was. But since I'm running out of space, this is what I'm going to do here. Now this side here, I'm going to factor. So this is going to factor because it's a it's a quadratic, right? I got an x, I got an x, multiplies to negative 12 and adds to negative 1. It's going to be a negative 4 and a positive 3 all over 6. I guess I didn't have to because I just rewrite it right here. Oh, multiply, multiply by x minus 4 over x plus 3. It's nice to put parentheses around these even though you don't have to when they're bits and pieces of a fraction. So now, because this factored out beautifully, I've got this piece right here, canceling this piece right here, and then I've got x minus 4 times x minus 4. That's going to give me x minus 4 quantity squared. And then I've got, maybe I'll put a 1 sixth there in the front. And then what value should I not have in the denominator? Well, um, I should not have x minus 4 equal to 0. So x should not equal, let's see, x should not equal negative, a uh, positive 4 because the original denominator right there, x cannot equal. Um, positive 4, but also since I'm dividing by this, x cannot equal negative 3 either. Say x not equal, not equal, negative 3. Let me reiterate that because I got a little, a little slower and maybe confusing in how I said it. In this original fraction right here, because it's a fraction, the denominator of this fraction cannot equal 0. So that's why x cannot equal 4 from right here. x cannot equal 4. However, I'm taking this number, whatever this is, and I'm dividing it by this overall result. So this overall result cannot be 0, which means the numerator can't be 0 either, which is the x plus 3, because when I divide it by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal, and now this x plus 3 is in the bottom, so it's an easy way to think about it. Basically, the, the fraction can't have 0 in the denominator, and this whole fraction can't be 0, because it's in the denominator of this fraction. All right, some little bit trickier ones. Find each product or quotient. So again, these are basically more of the same. I think I'll just pick one here to do, and then and then we'll be done. Uh, factor and cancel everything that you can. So right here we can see there's a 4 that can come out, leaving behind x plus 2 um, over x squared. Over here, I got multiplication. I've got the x. And the denominator is probably factorable. I mean, if they're giving you a problem in the textbook or on a test or a quiz, uh, it's almost always factorable, and something's probably going to cancel, otherwise why would they have given it to you? So put an x and an x. Uh, we're factoring this trinomial here. Multiplies to negative 14, adds to negative 5. That's going to be x minus 7 multiplied by x plus 2. You're going to get lots of practice factoring uh, common factors and factoring quadratics, and you just got to do it and do it and do it until you get really good at it because they never, ever go away. The x plus 2 is going to cancel out with this x plus 2. This x and some of these x's will reduce, so our final answer is going to be 4 in the top. That x and that x reduces to just an x in the bottom, because there's 2 here and 1 here, so 1 in the bottom. And then we got the x minus 7 in the denominator. So here's our answer, our reduced simplified answer. And then we want to remember to say, like, x cannot equal 7, and x cannot equal negative 2. Okay, those are... Um, the excluded values. Here's our answer. So lots of practice problems. You can go through them obviously uh, in the video. You can do more of these if you want, if you feel like you need extra practice. We're going to get lots more practice in the homework and in class. So that's it for this section. See you there.